to be prudent when we incentivize those businesses. So we would have to create a rubric based upon the dollar amount in which they are requesting, based upon the merits of the business. You have to look at the head tax that will be gained, the wage tax that will be gained. Uh, there are a number of things that will offset. So we, ha we have to create an equation that we can actually look at to make an informed decision rather than to just say, okay, we'll give it away. We do have to make an informed decision, which I think uh, to some degree uh, is needed. And not just for our friends. Valda? So um, I, I am not a fan of um, heavily incentivizing outside businesses to come into our city. I am much more an advocate for investing in people who already live here. People who have uh, generations of investment here in this city. We are going to be looking at a very different environment as we move toward a reopen of our economy in this new COVID. The um, large um, office buildings are not going to have the occupancy that they've had before. And in lieu of us enticing businesses to come here by incentivizing them to do so, those monies are much better spent investing in our local people, in our local businesses, and growing from within. It creates opportunities for people who are here, and it's using the tax dollars that come from those very people to reinvest in them. And the return on investment comes back to our taxpayers. So I am not a, a, a fan of, of, of incentivizing outside companies to come in, as has been the practice over many years, to attract large companies by doling out millions of dollars to incentivize them to come. Thank you. Mike? I don't see how you can be against it, simply because the incentives that are given are uh, don't cost any money. There is a there is a uh, a formula used, and it's typically three years. You get your money back. You get all your incentives back. But then you've got a long term commercial employer here who brings long term dollars into the city for a long period of time to come. The riverfront's a great example. It's they put in hundreds of millions of dollars in there, and they get thirty or forty million dollars back every single year. So there's a, there's a calculation. If you said, you know, we're gonna be so starved for employment in here, and it started long before this, this situation went right now. Newcastle County has lower tax than we do. We have a wage tax. If we're not careful about the way we manage ourselves, we are not gonna be competitive. And so if we can get an employer to come in here and bring three, four, 500 jobs, we should give them incentives. We want them because frankly, everybody else is lining up to give them incentives as well. Okay. Um, Can I interject for a moment? What's up? Uh, what's up? <laughs> um, well, I, I just want to say that your question did not say what size of business. It said businesses in general. So we want to make sure that we keep that at the forefront. When we talk about economic development. You can't, you again, can't answer this question. Oh, uh, I, I just, asked, could I interject? You said, what's up? I'm sorry. Well, I, I thought you had a question about what was going on, but I can't give you extra time to answer the question. Sorry. I kept it vague on purpose. Um, we're going to move on to the next question. Um, the city credited community policing for dramatically bringing down shootings and homicides in 2018, but this year Wilmington has already surpassed that year's total. What more should be done to reduce the loss of life in city neighborhoods? Question goes to Velda first. Well, um, I think there are a number of things that need to be done. The, the focus has been on um, individual citizens and, and trying to, um, to approach, approach it from that standpoint. Um, the mayor himself has acknowledged that what we're seeing now is a proliferation of high-powered weapons in large numbers. And so there needs to be a real serious focus on addressing that proliferation, how those guns are coming into our city, how they're getting into hands of, of young people. 
Um, community policing has, and that, I'm sorry, and that may need to include the, um, the ATF and federal um, involvement in really understanding and, 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 and scoping out where they're coming from, how they're getting here. Community policing has to be made to be real community policing. And on the programmatic side of things, we need to recognize that, that a lot of the violence that we see is, is gun group violence. And I will appoint an urban violence commission that's specifically aimed at implementing from a programmatic standpoint, um, group gun violence initiatives. We need social workers and um, an interventionist who can intervene with these group violence um, activities that are going on. A lot of it is retaliation, and we need people who understand that whole system of behavior and who are able to intervene and, um, and help stem uh, those kinds of activity. We lastly need the community. Okay, thank you.